So this week we are going to go back in time. We're going to learn to run Python from the command line. And the command line is the old interface, the way we used to have to talk to computers back in the 80s. And if you go down to search, type in CMD, you will see the command prompt come up on Windows. And there's another one for Linux and uh, Macintosh systems. Uh, on Windows, you may want to right click and see if you can run it as administrator. Otherwise, you won't have the permissions that you need to be able to do some of the things we'll be doing. Um, now, at the same time, if you're on your own computer, uh, or sorry, if you're not on your own computer, if you're on an HSU computer, you won't be able to run as administrator. So you're going to be in the desktop, which is going to make file paths really frustrating to work with. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but here we are in the 1980s. Isn't this fun and exciting? We can do exciting things like we can get a directory, dir, enter, of the files on our computer. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> we can also change directory or cd dot dot. That will move us up a directory or folder, cd dot dot. Again, dir. There's all the directories. You can tell the directories because they have little dirs. That's the same thing as a folder on modern Windows, um, right? So here's all of our stuff. And if we go into users, cd space users, so cd, change directory space, the, the name of the directory, we can then see that, ah, there's Jim's. This is my personal machine. Okay. And there's my stuff, including my desktop. So I can cd into my desktop, dir. And uh, you, can, you can move up and down in here. Isn't that exciting? We can do cd gsp. 318 dir hey there's our lab 9 batch processing file and one of the things that's important about this is you can actually hit 09 and hit tab and if you do that windows will look for the directory name to finish so it's an autocomplete thing to finish it so you don't have to keep typing everything all the time isn't that sophisticated very exciting stuff all right so <laughs> why would we be doing this well, let's say you wanted to run Python, but you didn't want to run it from inside a wing because it's going to run for three days and you want to be doing other things in wings. So you want to run it in what we call the background. It's really running in a console window, um, but in the future you could make this an automated task or anything else. In fact, the command line is still what's used for a lot of processing on your computer. Things that are running in the background kind of hidden. We build them to run in the command line, and then we can put them into things like the task scheduler in Windows for them to run periodically and make them into web servers and all kinds of stuff. So this is actually pretty commonly done, but only by software developers, not by, you know, regular folks on a computer anymore. So we can run Python from here. Okay, and there's Python. Isn't this exciting? X equals 12. Print X. Yes, this is Python. <laughs> Okay, print hello world. Okay, so we're now in the Python interpreter, but we don't really want to be here. Highly recommend using Wing to write Python, but we want to run something in the background. Like I said, we don't want to be stuck in Wing, so we can run it here. Now, the problem is when we run Python, we don't exactly know which version it's running, right? We can have multiple versions. You can see that here it ran Python 3.8 the latest standard installation that I have of Python. But if that's not the one you want to run, we've got to be able to specify which version of Python we're going to run. Um, and that can get really quite complicated. Um, in fact, you know, the one that I run most of the time now is sitting inside of my projects folder, projects Python, env test, env, uh, scripts? Yeah. There it is. There's Python. That's the one that I normally run. When you set it into Wing, you set it and forget it. It's not a big deal. Now here we can go ahead and do copy as path. And I can paste that in. And now it should run that version. Okay. Now it's running that version. Great. That's what I want to do is copy and paste that path all the time. So in other words, to run our land cover um, script, I could do this, and now it's running it. 
but it's running it with the version of Python that's the default and it didn't work um, because it's running an old version of SpotPy that's installed with that version of Python. So to run this without that, I need to tell it which version of Python to run and then I can tell it to run my script. Okay, and look how fast it is. We take out the shows. This is the cool thing about the open source software. It just, just cranks. It's much faster than, uh, you know, other products. Anyway, so um, the problem is this is this is a lot to type. And notice that we didn't have to put the full path to land cover. Well, that's because we're already in this folder, right? So you could save this into a text file and copy and paste it each time. But I'm going to show you another trick that's called a batch file. And this is another old Windows thing that comes in handy once in a while. So here I am in Notepad. And in Notepad, I can paste that in. And then I can type in landcover2.py. And if I go ahead and save that into my Python folder, I need to change this to all file types so it doesn't put a .text at the end. And let's call this bat. Landcover.bat. Dot .bat stands for batch file. Okay. Um, and so instead of doing this, I can do a control C to get out of there. Hold down the control key and hit C. Okay, there's our batch file. Well now if we do that bat land cover, it goes ahead and runs what's ever inside the batch file. Okay, so I did this kind of quickly um, and note that if you want to move this batch uh, file somewhere else, you'd need to provide a full path to your Python script. Now, the reason this is important is because this gives us full control over exactly which version of Python we're going to run, which is becoming more and more important because not only will you probably have multiple installs of Python that you put on there, but like Arc installs two versions of Python and other things are installing Python. Now they shouldn't make that the standard Python, the default, but you never know for sure. The way you know for sure is to specify it here in a batch file or in the command line. And then you can have this in the same file as your Python scripts, or you can provide a full path here as well. And then you can tell it exactly which scripts you want to run and when. Now the other thing about batch files is that you could put this in here several times. In other words, you could have multiple scripts that are executed inside of your batch files. Um, and I do need to mention that this is old. Batch files will probably go away at some point. They've been around forever. Um, and there is a whole new environment um, on Windows for you to be able to script the operating system, to be able to write in another programming language that runs the operating system. Um, I forget what it's called. But if you check out on Windows, um, it's there. And a lot of our sysadmin folks who manage the servers and the Windows machines on campus use that. So uh, if you really get into it, you'll, you'll do other stuff and get other fancy things. But uh, this is all I really use because all I need to do is be able to do these batch files so that I can run stuff, leave it, you know, run it, forget it. Now I can go back into Wing and I can start working on something else. Okay, um, same is true of the command um, console window. There's a bunch of other commands but you just saw what I use 99% of the time. Just the change directory and DIR and then running programs. And that's about it. Have fun.